Third Cinema is a film movement that started in the 1960s and 1970s. It was created by Latin American filmmakers as an alternative to Hollywood's narrative style, which they felt misrepresented their culture. In this video, we'll look at what Third Cinema is, who were some of its most influential filmmakers, and what principles they focused on while making their work. The term Third Cinema was coined by Fernando Salonis and Octavio Gatino in their late 1960s manifesto towards a third cinema. The name Third Cinema comes from the concept of a third world, which refers to developing countries that are not considered imperialist or neo-colonialist nations. The filmmakers behind this movement believed that their films would be able to resist imperialism and neo-colonialism, since they were made by people from colonized countries who could tell stories of struggle and resistance from their own perspectives. Key aspects of third cinema include Films that were made independently of Hollywood studios or European funding bodies, films that showed ordinary people struggling against oppression, films that dealt with political issues such as race relations or colonialism, films that reflected local culture rather than some far-flung locale or Hollywood set. Emerging in Latin America in the 1960s, third cinema is seen most obviously in modern times as a political movement that aimed to use cinema as a tool for social change. There are four manifestos generally accepted as beginning the genre of third cinema, Glauber Rocha's Aesthetic of Hunger in 1965, Julio Garcia Espinosa's For an Imperfect Cinema from 1969, Problems of Form and Content in Revolutionary Cinema in 1976 by Jorge Sangines, and as we've mentioned, Toward a Third Cinema by Fernando Salonis and Octavio Gatino. Although all four define the deep and many-faceted genre, Salonis and Gatino's Toward a Third Cinema is well known for its political stance and outline of the genre. And arguably Salonis and Gatino became the filmmakers most closely associated with the movement. Explaining the neo-colonialist dilemma and the need for what they call the cinema of subversion or a revolutionary cinema, in Toward a Third Cinema Salonis and Gatino explain the dilemma that the anti-imperialist filmmaker is left with a paradoxical need to survive within, as well as subvert what they call the system. They said, Third cinema is, in our opinion, the cinema that recognizes in that struggle the most gigantic cultural, scientific, and artistic manifestation of our time, the great possibility of constructing a liberated personality with each people as the starting point, in a word, the decolonization of culture. Salonis and Gatino define the problem with the system, the political and cultural authorities in place, as being one that reduces film to a commodity that exists to fill the needs of the film industry that creates them, mainly in the United States. A clear reference to the golden age of Hollywood, just then reaching its waning years. This spectator cinema continues a lack of awareness within the masses of a difference between class interests or that of the rulers and that of the nation, as they termed it. To Salonis and Gatino, films of the system do not function to change or move the culture forward, they function to maintain it. The third cinema film movement was also influenced by Marxist theory, about how it's possible for oppressed groups to rise up against their oppressors through art forms like cinema. One of these Marxist theories is Antonio Gramsci's concept of hegemony, a power relationship between two groups where one group dominates another group through cultural institutions, such as media representation and education systems. Hegemony is when one group has control over another group's thoughts so much so that those ideas become normalized within society, thus making it seem like there aren't any alternatives available besides what already exists. For example, if all you see on TV are white men as doctors then that becomes your idea of what being a doctor looks like. Interestingly, the Towards a Third Cinema Manifesto uses Jean-Luc Godard and the French New Wave throughout as a classic example of a group that failed to properly subvert the system. Referring to New Wave specifically as what they termed a second cinema or author's cinema, the problem begins with the genre's attempt to exist parallel, be distributed by and funded by the system. Salonis and Gatino quote Goddard's self-description as being trapped inside the fortress and refer to the metaphor throughout the manifesto. One of the classic films of third cinema is Gatino and Salonis' own film The Hour of the Furnaces. The work is a four-hour trilogy, divided into chapters and united by the theme of dependency and liberation. Salonis and Gatino created the documentary clandestinely between 1966 and 1968, after the dictatorship coup d'etat led by General Juan Carlos Onganía in the self-proclaimed Argentine Revolution in June 1966. This taking place during the early phases of what would become known as Argentina's infamous Dirty War. Glauber Rocha, who wrote the manifesto entitled Aesthetic of Hunger is an interesting case. His writing established third cinema as an alternative to Hollywood-style films and the socialist realism films of the Soviet Union. Старая Катерина. Ты что, действительно, вот подписи печать. Министр финансов 
и адъютант Папандопола из Одессы. На тебе 100 миллионов. Слушай, возьми все. Я тебе еще нарисую. Roger believed that these two forms of filmmaking were too commercial and nationalistic respectively, so he sought to create something new with third cinema, something both revolutionary and internationalist all at once. Nowadays that might seem impossible, or like some cruel oxymoron. But the 1960s after all was a period of possibility and reinvention. Rocha is a Brazilian filmmaker best known for his films Entranced Earth and Deus e o Giobu na Terra do Sol, also known as Black God White Devil. Carlos Diegues is another Brazilian filmmaker influential in the third cinema movement. Like Rocha he was also a key member of the Brazilian cinema novo genre, a movement noted for its emphasis on social equality and intellectualism that rose to prominence in Brazil during the 1960s and 1970s. The parallels with third cinema are clear. Like other film movements in history, third cinema was not a single unified movement. Rather, it was a term used to describe the work of filmmakers who sought to create films that address themes of revolution and liberation from imperialism, capitalism and racism. And third cinema historically is not limited to just Latin or South America. In fact, the movement spread far and wide. The movement was influenced by the Cuban Revolution, decolonization movements in Africa and Asia, militant anti-imperialist struggles in Latin America and elsewhere, as well as by the New Left movement. It was also influenced by Marxist thought, especially Gramsci's concept of cultural hegemony. The goal of third cinema was to produce political films that are more accessible to a general audience than those produced by traditional methods. Although there were no specific rules or guidelines for making third cinema films from the start, indeed some early examples were fairly conventional dramas, most were concerned with political themes, often focusing on questions about class struggle or imperialism, especially neo-colonialism. The term political cinema has been used instead of third cinema in some places where filmmakers use it in a more direct way. We can't talk about third cinema without commenting on one of the classic films of the movement, and one that is regarded today by many critics as one of the greatest films of all time. The Battle of Algiers is a film about the Algerian War of Independence against France, directed by Gilo Ponte Corvo. Sadi Yesef, who plays El Hodi Joffa, and Samia Kerbash, who plays Fadia, were, remarkably, both members of the FLN. Et les attentats à la bombe. Comme toujours, les termes du problème sont primo, l'adversaire, secondo, les moyens de le détruire. Il y a près de 400 000 Arabes à Alger. Sont-ils tous nos ennemis Nous savons bien que non. Nous disons qu'il y a une minorité qui s'impose par la terreur et la violence. Nous devons agir sur cette minorité dans le but de l'isoler et de la détruire. L'ennemi est rusé et dangereux. C'est un adversaire qui se déplace en surface et en profondeur, avec des méthodes révolutionnaires bien éprouvées et une tactique originale. Allez-y, Martin. The film tells the story of the Algerian resistance movement during the 1954-1962 conflict between France and its colony of Algeria, which sought independence from French rule. Both the tactics of the FLN guerrilla insurgency and the French counterinsurgency, and the uglier incidents of the war are depicted. Both colonizer and colonized commit atrocities against civilians, and this is notably presented in the film. This is indeed a film that pulls no punches. The FLN's actions are presented as being part of a larger campaign to destabilize colonial rule. In this way it can be seen as a central work of third cinema. Alongside the Hour of the Furnaces, it's a seminal work of the movement and can be seen as its zenith. The third cinema film movement is a unique perspective on how cinema can be used to engage with the world we live in, and it has influenced many filmmakers and scholars ever since. Third cinema is an important part of the history of cinema. It was a way for filmmakers from Latin America to share their stories, their culture and their ideals with the rest of the world. The films they made were not just entertaining but also political in nature. They helped people understand what life was like in other countries as well pulling the light away from the hegemony of a fading Hollywood. This is what we can do, said the filmmakers of Third Cinema. Come join us. Can you see the echoes of Third Cinema in the films produced by the mainstream today? Don't forget to like and share this video. For more in-depth analysis of film history, film theory and the movements of cinema, subscribe to the Filmmaking Lifestyle channel.